BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 108, Hormones in the Cycle of a Woman's Life. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa-quality botanical skin care. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Today, we are introducing a series of podcasts, and hopefully you will be able to uh, see all of them, but we think each one will stand alone. And this is a series that's taken from a speech that Dr. Maupin was invited to give to the St. Louis Family Church. And it's kind of an unusual venue for her, uh, it, it, it offers an opportunity for her to uh, emphasize or explore her religious perspective, which is very pertinent to you personally, mm-hmm. but is what is not what you normally talk about or address when you go out in public to talk about hormones and hormone replacements. So, so what was it like for you to... So I loved, I loved speaking to the family church. It was a group of women, uh, 400 or so women mm-hmm. there for breakfast, mm-hmm. and they were very gracious and listened and... and uh, seemed to want to hear what I had to say, but one of the best things about it was it gave me a chance to talk about really why I got into hormone replacement and my experience with a near-death experience after my hysterectomy and also the, the reason I find it so important for people to understand hormone replacement, bioidentical hormones, and testosterone replacement for women. And it gave me a platform for that in, in an area where I feel very comfortable. My church is very much like the family church. So they were, it was the perfect platform for uh, s- explaining what I do every day and, and the amazing results that we have. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a fascinating experience. I had the opportunity to attend and Pastor Patsy, who was the, the leader of, of the group that day, I think they have, they have two preachers, mm-hmm. was saying, you know, we never ask anybody to come to our church. We just ask people to go to church and we ask you to come and talk about the science of this because we think information is critical. It is. And yeah. that's just such a delightful perspective to, to experience in a, in a community faith environment. So mm-hmm. it, it, was, it was a good it opportunity. Was, it was wonderful. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. I'm going to start with something that's very, a story that only this crowd and, and my church and a few other churches would understand. And I can't do that many places. I am here to talk about your health and what we can do to make ourselves whole, as whole as we can be on earth. But I need to tell you a story first, so you know where I'm coming from. My story is, I've been a Christian since I was 15 in Young Life. Young Life brought me to Christ. And um, that was awesome, but you know, it goes back and forth and you go up and down as you grow up and you learn things. And I then had to be yanked by God. I had a hysterectomy. I had to have a hysterectomy at 47. I'm 58, so that was a while ago. But I still remember this vividly, and most of you will be able to relate to this. I had a complication. I ended up in in the ICU. I ended up almost dying, ARDS, and a bunch of other things that had... I'd never had a patient that ever had any of these things after a hysterectomy. So it was... It was miraculous in an inside-out way. In other words, God brought me this problem to bring me here today. So I had that problem, and I had a near-death experience in, a, in an area that I know. I do hysterectomies, thousands of hysterectomies in my time as an OBGYN. It shouldn't have been anything, but he made that happen so I could be at his feet in a near-death experience. I found myself begging for him to take me, because I was on a respirator, it was terrible, and I begged to go to heaven, and he granted me a glimpse. And I was at his feet, covered in white, and he, I, and he, he welcomed me, but told me that I had to go back, because he had something for me to do. And what he had for me to do, I didn't know for quite a while after that. But I, I argued with him. <laughs> I argued with God. Christ was right there right in front of the light, and I argued, and that's my personality. It's not good, but it's, but it's true. And I argued, and I said, wait a minute, I want to stay here with you. It was the most wonderful experience I've ever felt. Oh, wow. 
It was God around me, all the love and the care that I've ever felt from anyone multiplied and multiplied. And he just looked at me like, I didn't really see his face, I felt it. And he looked at me like, you, you're, just, you're, you're arguing with me. <laughs> you have to go back. And I said, I don't want to go back. So I, came, I was brought back and immediately all of my symptoms went away. I was out of the unit and home in a day. But at that hysterectomy, that's not, you know, God always works a little differently with every one of us. He always makes me then have to go through some steps. This step was I had to then go, what's, what do you want me to do? I mean, what happened was I had no hormones after my ovaries were gone. I felt terrible before the hysterectomy. I felt worse afterwards. And I was distraught. I gained weight. I, I mean, I gained 20 pounds in a, in a month. I was swollen. I couldn't think. I, could, I mean, I had to think for my job. I had to have stamina. I had to have muscle strength to deliver babies. I had to do all, have all of these things that should have been easy. It should have been easy to come back like that, but I had no hormones. And he showed me loud and clear what it's like not to have hormones so that I could then relate to all of my patients who, who didn't have them and had a severe reaction to none of them to not having any of them. So in any case, three months later, I gave up. I finally took my hands off the wheel. I quit looking for doctors and being told that I was lazy, fat, and crazy. And I mean, they told me that. And I'm a doctor, they treated me like I was silly, stupid, you know? And I said, I'm not, I know something's wrong. And I got an answer three days after I finally gave up and prayed and just begged for help. And God gave me the answer, it was bioidentical, estrogen and testosterone from a doctor in California. He brought him all the way to St. Louis to meet me and treat me and train me. And I was better. I mean, I was back, not, not, I was still fat. <laughs> I was, I had my, I had my spirit back. I didn't, I had lost my spirit. I had lost my trust. I had lost my everything because I lost hormones. And I know there's people out there in this group who have lost your hormones or are on the way to losing them or they're out of balance. And that's what brought me here today. That's awesome. So that is, that is, this is God's, God's will that we talk about this. He wants us to be well. So it's a divine calling for me. Now, the first thing you have to know is you have to know, you have to take care of yourself. Like Pastor Jeff said, like Pastor Patsy tells you, you all give everything in, in your, if you're a pitcher of water, you've poured it out. You don't look at yourself, you think it's, it's selfish. I don't want you to do that. I want you to set aside time, just like you do for God, set aside time for, for yourself, for your health. I want you to, we're going to talk today about foundations of health, which is lifestyle, and then what female hormones do, because you aren't going to understand anything I talk about if I don't tell you that part. And then I want to talk about imbalances in hormones that happen before we're 40 and imbalances that happen after we're 40 because we've got such a huge span of, of age groups here. So it was a little hard to write it because yeah. there's so much to talk about. So this, is, this you all know, but not everybody does. And I'm just as much to blame because of all of these things, you know, I try to get to the dentist every six months. That's, that's one thing you probably have no idea how important that is. You have the highest level of inflammation in your gums. If your gums aren't healthy, you go into preterm labor if you're pregnant. You've got to, you have to go to the dentist. You have to keep your teeth, have to be taken care of. That's very important. You can't just take your kids to the dentist. You have to go. So make the appointment and do it, just like you would if it was a church function. Think, think of yourself, it, just like they say in the airplane, you have to put the oxygen on yourself before you put it on your children. And it sounds wrong, but it's right, because you, if you're not well, your whole family is going to crumble, because you're the center of the family, and God made us that way. So, like you have all this time, I know you don't, but these are the things that we have to do. We have to sleep, we have to take supplements, because no one's diet's proper anymore. We don't make our, we don't grow our food. We don't have, we don't have all the nutrients we need. We need all the nutrients, and we'll go over that a little bit, but you need a lot more nutrients than you think you do, because it's not in your food. 
exercise, you have to make appointments to exercise and find out what exercise you like. Because I hate to exercise. I just hate it, but I do it. It is not fun for me. But I found that if I have an appointment, I'll go with a trainer or my husband, and we go and work, work out. It makes him work out, too. And if I have to pay for it, then I'm going to go. If they charge me if I don't go, I, that makes me go. Something you know is going to motivate you, a friend. There's all kinds of things. Walking your dog. You have to have exercise three times a week, at least for an hour, three times a week. And yes, you have to sweat. Yes, you have to, yes, your heart rate has to go up. You can't just go, oh, I'm just walking and talking to my girlfriend. That's not exercise. Okay? That is, doesn't count. And running up and down the stairs at your house when you're doing the wash, that doesn't count either. You have to really concentrate and do, do exercise. So your GYN visit's important. All of these things are so important. Just like for your kids, you take care of yourself like you do for your children because you're just as important. Now, then the bad things, I do this too. My worst thing on this list is I overschedule. I always overschedule because there's so many things to be done. God wants us to do things. Our family wants us to do things. We want to do things. Our husband has requirements of us, and, and there's no, not enough hours in the day. So I overschedule, and I'm always late, and I'm always stressed out because I'm always late. That's stress that you, you don't need. Say no if you can't do something. Think about that. That's something your doctor's probably not going to tell you, but I'll tell you because that's the basis of much of our stress is having too many things to do. So once in a while, say no. And you can read the rest. We all know about that. Don't smoke. Don't drink soda, that kind of thing. I'm going to have all of these slides on my website within about 24 hours. So BioBalance Health you don't have, I, is where you get it, and we have a little folders outside. So you can go look, and we'll have all of this on it. We'll even have a tape of it. OK, if you lived in Amalfi, Italy, you could grow your own food. You'd live in a tiny little house. You would have no car. You would be much healthier than you are today because you wouldn't have all of the, you wouldn't have all the conveniences or the possessions or any of those things that Americans have. And you would live near your mother who would take care of your children because she wouldn't work. And you would stay and make a three-hour meal every night for the men of the family who would be working. It is a different life. But Mediterranean diet, that's what they're talking about. Grow your own food, no chemicals, nothing. That's impossible for us. So we have to still look for what we can look for in our diet. Try to get the, the most basic fruits and vegetables, meats, lean meats. That There's nothing wrong with meat. I don't know why we threw meat out of our out of our food, that meat is good for you. If you, if you exercise and you don't eat meat, you're breaking your muscle down and you're giving your muscles nothing to grow with. You have to have meat and there's nothing wrong with red meat. Fish, and, and every meal should have something that's either meat, cheese, eggs, or fish. So that should be a staple for you and fresh foods, which takes time, but you can do it. That, that you can do when you're going to the store, just like picking up chips. Don't pick up chips. <laughs> OK? Really, that's, waste, that's just a waste of money. OK, what do female hormones have to do with it? Those are the things you, you can all do at any age to stay healthy. But your female hormones are the things that go to every, they go to every cell. They're liquid messengers. They, God made this amazing system. And I don't know how anybody cannot believe in God when they're in medicine. That's impossible for me because God made science possible. He made all the rules. He made it so complex we're down to molecules when we're talking about our health. So God's there every day in making your body work until you're about 35 to 40. And then, and then, and then these, these messengers get a little mixed signals. Now, it could be our genetics. It could be it could be that our lifestyle, it could be stress, it could be things we can't do anything about. But our hormones start becoming imbalanced at the end of our 30s and especially after 40. So that's why I divide, I'm going to divide the symptoms uh, and the problems of hormone imbalance up between the young and the older ladies, mature ladies like me. So these are chemical keys. They go into a lock. They're specific for every one of your cells. 
So if you have too much estrogen, it's overstimulating those cells. So it's about balance and not just about how much that you have, but you have to have your hormones and female hormones. Now, there's many others, but female hormones are estradiol, which is your estrogen, young woman's estrogen. It comes from your ovary. Progesterone, which is, I have the symptoms or the, uh, the things that they do. They may be um, small for you to read at this point. I'm sorry about that, but there's so many things they do. But estradiol is basically the female hormone. It grows our breasts and makes our hair shiny. It makes us have a waistline and hip fat so that we can bear children. And it gives us one of the hormones we need to, when we're pregnant. And it is, it's, it's important. It's very important throughout our lives. Progesterone is the hormone that balances it. God gave us a balance. Progesterone is only secreted from the ovary when you ovulate. And that means before we started having periods and after menopause, there's no progesterone. It's only there to balance your estrogen. And it's there to make your uterus behave and your breasts behave and, and, all, and, your, and your mind be stable because lack of progesterone is PMS. And we're going to talk about that. The last one is the one my book is about, testosterone. No one told you you had testosterone, I bet. No one told you you need testosterone. Testosterone is not a male hormone only. They have 10 times as much as we do. But we have three times as much testosterone as estrogen. It's a secret. It's the secret female hormone. And it is what gives us our clear brains, our muscles, our waistline, our ability to sleep, our ability to think, our ability to have strong bones and muscles and not be on a walker when we're 70, it gives us all of those things. And when it goes down, we start to age. But when we're young, we have lots of it. Let me t just one thing you should remember. If you're young and you're on birth control pills, it suppresses your testosterone as well as the estrogen in your body. So young women who are in new marriages, and they are taking birth control pills for, and, and you know, I've given birth control pills to thousands of women. It's not that this is not a good thing. It's that you should know this. It decreases your sex drive. So you're in a new marriage and you go on the pill and you don't have a sex drive anymore. It's not marriage. It's that you don't have any <laughs> testosterone. <laughs> and I mean, it could be marriage, but it probably isn't. <laughs> So this is, this is just very, I mean, you need to know that. And if you have that problem, you need to go to your doctor and say, which of the birth control pills don't do that to me? Okay, so that's, that's important for you to know. I'm going to skip through this because it didn't come out very well with the colors. Basically, it's hormone balance gives you normal periods when you're cycling. Okay, so before the age of 40, when you're having periods, if they're regular and they're normal and you have cramps, not on the pill, I'm saying this is if you're on nothing, then your hormones are normal. So that's a good thing. It should be reassuring. You should say, well, I've got normal periods, so no, I don't need to go to the doctor about something as, as long as you don't have symptoms, but we'll go over that. We had a question from, from you guys, and, and the question was, that was good. Baby crying, that's perfect. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, even babies have hormones. The reason boys are boys is that they, they are genetically boys. They make testicles that then make them boys. So if you're pregnant with a boy, you get a little bit of their testosterone, believe it or not. So those pregnancies are different than girl pregnancies. Girls have very low levels of testosterone when they're babies, more estrogen dominant, but not high levels. But that makes them girls. So that's what we had when we were in our mother's womb. I delivered babies for 28 years. And this is one of my products. And she's, she's beautiful, and she does have some estrogen. So that was one of the questions. So we have it in the womb. Children have low levels of hormone every day. Little boys have testosterone. Little girls have dominantly estrogen and a tiny bit of testosterone. And then at puberty, when we start, start getting hair in places we don't want it, then that's when our testosterone's kicking in from our, from our ovary. And then we start to produce estrogen and develop breasts. So it's really the, 
the testosterone that happens first, and then it is, and then it's the estrogen. We get breasts, and then we get the little belly. Because don't make your child go on a diet when they're 12 because they've got a belly. That's just they're not getting fat. They're just getting enough estrogen to then help them with the rest of you know their development. If you if you get on their case, they'll become anorexic. So we don't want that. But that's not something that you should get excited about. It goes away. They get hips and breasts, and they get a waistline. That's, that's fine, but you shouldn't get too excited about that. Ovulation brings progesterone. We usually don't ovulate right away when we start our periods. We start ovulating a year or so later. So periods become more normal, and that's progesterone. When they, all of our hormones peak at age 19. We were really built to have babies early. And when, when our lifespans were shorter, we, ate, we were built to have babies when we were younger. So that's why we peak at 19. God was brilliant. Got us through the caveman days by giving us the ability to be fertile and have children early on. So female hormones are gone by 50. They go away. Men don't have that. They just drop their testosterone to low levels. But they have it later, like in their 60s or late 50s. So that's important to know. Now you've heard my presentation for the St. Louis Family Church and the information about the science of hormones and how hormones decrease as we age. And, and in the next segment, if you have an opportunity to come back, Kathy's going to talk about uh, PMS. She's going to talk about hormone issues for women, especially hormone deficit issues for women before they turn 40, uh, and then mm -hmm. symptoms of hormone imbalance in women after they turn 40. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.